then my friends, you're listening to eBird Online, guys, it just had to happen. There was a big head shaped hole, right in the middle of the 90 day fiancé schedule, and Bilal just jumped right in. Yes, that's right, Bilal's right up there with Big Ed in the dislikability stakes, however, Big Ed had one thing going for him. Teddy, Bilal, where's your Teddy? Without Teddy, you're pretty much finished out here on these YouTube streets. And guys, I really don't think I'm over-egging it when I say what I've got to say to you in this video today is nothing short of a public service announcement. I wouldn't be doing, well, what I call a job if I didn't warn you about people like Bilal. And in a very competitive field, Bilal is one of the biggest misogynists known to man. He's a manipulator extraordinaire, and inexplicably, he thinks that he's slick and nobody knows his game. Au contraire, Bilal, au contraire. So this week, Bilal, who's a professional liar and bullshitter, decided to deviate into gaslighting. Along with the rest of the internet, I'm screaming, what is Shaida thinking? It's either A, the old biological clock, or B, early onset dementia. There are no other viable alternatives. But before we get into all of that, I just want to say, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit it, press it, smash it, caress it, subscribe my friends, subscribe. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my content. And guys, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to smash the like button. You too, Bilal. I know you're listening. So guys, this week, Bilal switched off the comments on his Instagram. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if he also launched his iPhone out the window and ripped his internet connection out of the wall. The people have spoken and he doesn't like what they've got to say. And it's mostly Bilal's a manipulator, a gaslighter, a liar and an extremely low calibre misogynist. He really is a toxic stew of humanity. And whilst I'm very sure that Bilal has a, a ghetto wide reputation of that stuck up little prick, he's clearly not ready for what the whole of the World Wide Web has to say about him and his antics. So with that said and without further ado, I give you Bilal and Shaida. So I've been putting quite a lot of thought into this and here's what I've come up with. Such is Bilal's desire to be top dog in everything and at all times that he's struggling to cope with Shaida. She's quite graceful and poised and she's a great communicator. So when Bilal tries his okie doke on her, it doesn't really work. I think Bilal's game is to ostensibly neg Shaida, to grind down her confidence and her sense of self-worth to such a degree that he can render her trepidatious and worried about making any move or doing or saying anything to upset him. I think that Bilal's hoping when he finally gets to marry her in 90 days, he'll have a really docile and compliant Shaida to deal with. This is Bilal's way of attempting alpha male status. Bilal does not want an equal partner in this marriage. He wants someone docile. So basically, at the moment, he's book breaking Shaida. Bilal's every word and move is aimed at trying to weaken Shaida. And as he gaslights and manipulates his way through the weeks, Shaida's beginning to pipe up and hold him to account. So when we first see this couple, they're at the apartment and Shaida's drinking a cup of coffee. And she actually had to ask Bilal, where am I allowed to drink it? And he said, you can drink it wherever you want. And she took one look at his face and walked back into the kitchen and drank the coffee literally over the kitchen sink. Guys, it's the clearest sign of this is my house and keep it spotless that I've ever seen. Shaida is so uncomfortable, she didn't just drink coffee wherever she wants. But Bilal didn't like being framed by Shaida as a little bit OCD and very particular. And so he decided to shoot back at her. And he said, well, not many men would be happy with their girlfriend leaving dirty drawers on the bedroom floor. Not many men, Bilal, would even mention it. And in fact, many, many men would love for Shaida to pop around and accidentally leave her drawers on the floor. He felt that she was jabbing him, and I'm not so sure she was. But irrespective, he had to jab back. For he's Bilal. He must have the upper hand. And in this passive-aggressive jab from Bilal, he tried to insinuate Shaida was the dirtiest girl since, oh, baby goat Lisa. Shaida's never got a hair out of place. It's difficult to believe this was any more than just a one-off occurrence. So Bilal then changed the conversation and he said, We're going to Juma and what I don't want is to be late. It's an absolute pet hate of mine being late to Juma and it's something I would never ever do. So I'm just warning you now, I like being on time and I want you to be on time too. And aside from the fact he spoke to her like a two-year-old on their way to kindergarten, the clear insinuation behind this was 
that Shahid is somehow going to make them late. And the fact that he said it three times would make any normal person think that she'd been late previously. It's their first week. Bilal's trying to let us all know that he's a great guy who doesn't do being late. Bilal, try not being late with the clothes you wear. That would be helpful. His fashion's so late, people think he's retro cool. So apparently at Juma, Shahid is going to meet Bilal's extended family and Bilal tells production, this is really important to me as these people are my community. And he said it with what he thought was gravitas. Keep trying, Bilal. Keep trying. <laughs> you punk ass. But let it be known, the importance of this could not have been overstated to Shaida. And it really does put me in mind of the times when he said, if my kids don't like you, that's it. If my mum doesn't like you, I'll call time on this relationship every single time she meets somebody. It's super high stakes, according to Bilal. And it's somewhat surprising that this alpha male, who considers himself high value, have so many people in his life that seem to have a legally binding veto on any of his relationships. His mum, his sister, his brother, his ex-wife, his kids, the bloke from the 7-Eleven, his uncle, you know, the one that's a bit funny, they call him Hans, and the weed man. Bilal, where does this end? Where? Come on, the people want to know. Bilal genuinely believes his shit doesn't stink. It's absolutely impossible for me to imagine a world in which Bilal asks other people for their opinion and then takes it. So that leads me to the not unreasonable conclusion that every time he talks about these high stakes, it's yet again Bilal just trying to manipulate and discombobulate Shaida. Shaida always feels like she's walking over hot coals and that's the way Bilal likes it. It wouldn't surprise me at all if his family have got the view of whoever's going to put up with Bilal's bullshit is welcome to him. Muslim girls, Kansas wide, are breathing sighs of relief. And so the couple get into the car and they go to Juma. And so while they're driving along, Shaida says she's very anxious. Not just because of the whole community, but mainly because of Bilal's ex-wife. And she explains this to Bilal in the car. And then she lets production know, if Bilal's ex-wife doesn't approve of me, her negativity is going to rub off on the kids. And that would most likely end the relationship. So she pretty much knows this is high stakes and I make her right. I think getting the ex on side is absolutely key in this particular relationship. And Bilal said, I've had exactly the same experience, so it was no different for me. I came to meet your people first, I came to Trinidad. And so of course she points out that a visitor for a week is rather different than a fiancé who may stay forever. And she said, my situation is completely different. I'm anticipating meeting your ex-wife. And so you can't take away how I feel. And so Bilal gave his best condescending voice. Guys, he's had plenty of practice. <laughs> And he said, the point I was trying to make is that I can relate to you. Oh my good lord. Bilal, where did you get your degree from? I genuinely think you need to phone them up and ask them for the freaking money back. They've clearly taught you F all. Upon leaving university, you're supposed to be able to make a linear argument. You're supposed to be able to argue things that you don't even agree with. So Bilal's trying to say to Shaida, I've been in your shoes, no big deal. I dealt with it. So the point that Shaida is trying to make is that whatever you dealt with is nothing like what she's dealing with. She's trying to tell you she has anxiety rather than trying to trivialise her feelings. You might try and reassure her. I can't think of any reason why my ex-wife wouldn't like you. I'm sure you're going to get on just great. You know, that sort of thing. But then of course, that would make her feel secure. And we don't want that, do we? You've built your janky castle on sand. Why should Shaida have the benefit of foundations and cement? And Shaida told production, Bilal always tries to lecture me. I want a fiancé, not a dad. And she said to Bilal, all I wanted from you was to tell you my feelings and for you to respect it and say, I understand that you're a bit nervous. That's all I wanted. Shaida, all Bilal wanted was for you to stay nervous and also for you to feel silly for being so. That's all he wanted. To reassure her would make her stronger and he doesn't want that because it would make her harder to manipulate. Oh God, here we go, he's back again. Bilal said, if you recall what I just said, and then guys, I don't know what the fuck he said after that because I freaking lost it. Guys, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up tomorrow in a better frame of mind and I will finish the video then. Hum, don't let a bitch try me. Good night. Guys, I'm back. I'm just going to pick up where I left off. 
So Bilal decided not to say to Shaida, don't worry, and acquiesce her fears. Instead, he said, oh, Shaida, you've got a booger in your nose. I think he wanted to kind of divert and to insinuate this is all funny and jokes. But interestingly enough, from what I've perceived thus far, it seems that Bilal doesn't even possess a sense of humour. Jokes need to invoke a laugh. They need to be freaking funny, mate. But guys, what happened next caused all the ire. Shaida said, I'm sick and tired of you pranking me about the booger in my nose. And as she said the word sick, she tapped him on the head. Bilal looked at her earnestly and said, uh, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, we keep our hands to ourselves. And Shaida said, I'm just joking. We're touchy-feely, we like play fighting. And then Bilal went into full wanker mode. He said, keep your hands to yourself and watch your tone. What? Guys, Bilal's just unbelievable. I'm just surprised he didn't add the young lady at the end. And so still laughing, Shaida tapped him on the head once more. And he said, right, I can literally pull over right now and you'll be taking an Uber for the rest of the ride home. Good Lord, Bilal. An Uber all the way to Trinidad's going to cost you a penny or two. <laughs> but then Bilal lost his mind. He went and spoke to producers and he said, Shaida's being very aggressive and she's showing me a side of her I don't like. I know she's doing this as a joke, but it's a joke that I don't play. And Shaida said, really? You're going to put me out at the side of the freeway? And she tapped him again. And guys, he stopped the car. And guys, the colour drained from Shaida's face. And she said, I suddenly realised the severity of the situation. What situation is that, Shaida? That you're married to a fucking gaslighting dickhead? That situation? Oh, sorry guys, it would seem a good night's sleep has done me absolutely no good. I'm still fuming with Bilal. And so Bilal looked at her and said, you thought I was joking. You want to do it one more time? And Shaida said, I was playing. He said, no, no, I don't play. And Bilal said, you do not hit people where I come from. You don't do that. I'm actually starting to think you're a violent person. And then Cocker Hoop at his little power play of threatening to throw her out at the side of the road. Then he said, you're quiet right now, huh? It's all jokes till it gets real serious. And she said, oh God, Bilal, all of this is making me even more nervous. And so he starts the car, goes and picks up his kids, and they go to the Islamic Centre. But guys, the whole time, he wasn't even speaking to her at all. And when they got there, he jumped out of the car and went straight in, just leaving her to fend for herself. He did his prayers, and obviously the men and women pray in different rooms. And after the prayers had finished, he just wandered round, chatting to people, shaking hands, being statesmanlike, being Bilal. While Shaida stood there like a spare part. And just as they were finally leaving, they saw Bilal's ex-wife. And so he introduced them and they chatted and his ex-wife said, I'm really busy at the moment, but I guess we'll have a talk at some point. And given that she kicked Bill out of the curb and now we know why, I guess she's not really bothered who else he goes out with as long as they're a suitable person. One thing we can all guarantee, there's going to be no semblance of jealousy there whatsoever. And so next time we see Shaida, she's talking to production. And she said, ever since I've been here, Bilal's just been lecturing me. I've really not had much of a voice. And so she does some yoga to calm down and finally Bilal arrives home. And Shaida's dressed up to the nines because they're going on a date night. But Bilal walks in and says, I really don't feel like date night tonight. And so they sit down in the conservatory and Bilal said, we need to have a talk. You hit me on three different occasions. And Shaida explains yet again, in Trinidad we play fight with each other. I think it's just a cultural difference. And Bilal said, you hit me pretty hard. Bilal, why are you gaslighting her? You know that it was a joke and you know that she did not hit you hard at all. She lightly tapped you. It would have been more irritating than anything. I used to do it to my little brother, so I know. But Bilal kept saying, you're violent. And Shaida said, it was a joke. How was my countenance? How was my face? How was my expression? Was I angry or was I smiling and looking for laughter? And guys, I think this is what's killing Bilal. He's never able to get the upper hand because he has someone as educated as he is. Shaida won't just accept every bit of bullshit he says. But then she said, I really didn't mean to offend you and I apologise. And when she said that, you could see that Bilal was still going to milk it a bit more. And he said, I'm the biggest jokester there is, but you overstepped your boundaries. Bilal's the biggest jokester there is. Go, don't tell me, Bilal. You were the second funniest kid in homeschool. But Shaida is seeing the bigger picture and she tells production he played a prank on me but now I feel as if he's not affording me the same grace. And so she said very definitively, I understand I offended you and I will not do it again. But you left me alone and you completely ignored me at Juma. 
And Bilal said, sometimes in a situation, the best thing to do is to be silent. And she said, I feel like I'm being punished because you've cancelled date night. And then Bilal said, I didn't say I'd cancelled date night. I just said I didn't feel like going. And she said, I'm very sorry, I won't do it again. And Bilal said, I grew up play fighting, but at the same time, don't disrespect me. And then he said to production, I'm very worried about Shaida. She might be very violent. Right now, we're not ready to walk down the aisle. And that's where we leave things for this week. So guys, everyone's talking about this couple. And a lot of people are saying Shaida could do so much better than Bilal. And I guess that could be one way of looking at it. But I prefer to look at it as, where possibly could she find anybody worse than Bilal? Bilal attempts to set boundaries within the relationship by making threats. It's simply unbelievable to me that somebody would think it's okay to threaten to put someone out of the car on the side of the motorway. She's only just arrived in this country. She doesn't know any of the areas. How unsafe would you feel if that's what someone threatened to do to you? But Shaida should be peeping all of this behaviour and realising that this, this period right here, this is the honeymoon period. This is the best six months you'll ever have and it will all be downhill after that. This is the time when you put on your good mask and you pretend that you're happy-go-lucky and easy to get on with. That's what I did with Mr. Ebird and I kept it up until it was too late. <laughs> six months down the line, you get bored of putting an act on and the real you reveals itself. Guys, I absolutely dread to think who the real Bilal is. I'm pretty sure when we find out who he really is, he'll crack iPhone screens. Note to self, watch on my laptop. There hasn't yet been one segment in the whole of this show where he hasn't talked down to her, gaslit her, tried to manipulate her, tried to double talk her, tried to mansplain, tried to grass her up, or simply tried to talk over her. Whatever he's doing, day in, day out, it's toxic. And he really does think he's one step ahead of everyone else, as tricksy as he thinks he is. Right from the very first second of the first episode of 90 Day Fiancé, we all had his number. Toxicity and delusions of grandeur, and the manipulations were virtually written across his t-shirt. Bilal, Shaida will be grateful when you be humble. How about that? So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Bilal has behaved in an unforgivable manner? when he threatened to turf Shaida out of the car, not to mention him ignoring her at the Islamic centre and just making it an awful day for her. Or on the other hand, do you think that Shaida went too far when she was tapping him and hitting him in the car? I have to admit, I did see a slight element of testing going on there. Please let me know in comments down below. Right, I think I've said enough about this little twonk for this week. I've yet to watch the new episode, so I'll be watching that tomorrow and making my first video hopefully tomorrow evening. So until then, have a great night. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed to my channel thus far. I really genuinely appreciate it. If you haven't done so, consider subscribing. And also, don't forget to smash that like button. You've been listening to eBird Online, and I bid you good day.